Hey, <laughs> it's Monday. We're all back. Ooh. We're all back uh, for the first time in a couple weeks. But um, yeah, so we meet. Uh, this is a little bit of inside baseball for self narrate. Do you want me to get closer? I think we probably should. Wiggle, wiggle. All right. Um, we all meet once a week at least to discuss what all we have done for the <laughs> organization, to plan the next couple of weeks ahead. Um, we do these things and to talk about how we're cutting caffeine. Oh yeah, well, um, at least Carly and I have decided to stop drinking coffee this year. Not this one. Oh, I hate it. And uh, and I think it's hitting Carly because it's uh, what nine o'clock and it's about that time. Fading fast. Um, but anyways, so we are a company. Like self narrates a company, and sometimes when you have a company, you have to talk about the logistics and the business stuff when we we as a company are very touchy-feely like not that we're touching each other but like emotionally like you know we talk about stories we talk about helping people grow i'm gonna take that and rewind it nope back. nope nope leave that in there don't you dare cut that out i would be so disappointed in you if you cut that out anyways so as you know we talk about stories and we talk about personal growth we talk about empowerment Right? What are some other words you would use that, that, that we focus on? Isn't that a lot of words, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, we talk a lot about how you view life and interpret others. So by, <laughs> I can't stop counting, by knowing your own story. And thinking critically about that, it can make you more open to listening to other people too. Yeah, so uh, we are, like I said, also a business. And so sometimes, it's time to have serious business conversations. Because you see how serious they are right now. Right. And so we, the three of us, had a conversation earlier where, you know, we started talking about the logistics of the business. And it kind of caught each of us off guard. Each of us presented something, I think, in a way that caught the others off guard. Um, you know, I was talking about something, and I think it was uh, not couched in the appropriate uh, manner to express like, oh, hey, this is what I actually meant by using this particular language of business, and which was then kind of rebutted with more businessy language that surprised me because I didn't come to the conversation thinking I was going to offend. Yeah, so but we can give you a little bit of context. So like I'm like waffling around a try uh, to... without going like too much into the weeds. So um, Brandon and Jaren usually feel like, well, I need to do my due dil diligence by putting things in writing. And if I put something in writing and use like standard language, then it's probably good, right? And for me, I come from I don't care what's in writing, if it's not absolutely accurate, there's no way I'm signing it, no way I'm moving forward with it. Like, I'd rather there not be a contract than, or a piece of paper, than there be one that isn't. Uh, it's kind of like, if we're gonna put something in writing, let's do it to the fullest extent, right? So I looked at what Brandon and Jaren had proposed to me, them thinking it was pretty standard business language is like incredibly offensive. <laughs> And was like, listen, guys, because I like you, we're going to talk about this. Otherwise, I would have just walked away completely. So it kind of caught them off guard that I started asking questions that the language brought up in, in the sample um, agreement that they formed. And we were all like, oh, we were totally coming at this from completely different angles, which is what, you know, we were kind of going with. They're like, oh, well, we just thought, you know, we needed to have something on paper. And if it isn't super formal, then that's fine. I'm like, well, it is on paper, so it is formal. <laughs> So, um, anyway, we got through all of that and, and it really shows that one, I could have come in and gotten very offended and refused to have a conversation versus saying, this is what you're communicating to me or how I, this is what I glean from what you're saying and this is how I interpret it and this is what you're saying to me versus you know and then them be able to clarify so we were able to sit around and really hash out what um what we really needed to agree upon which we had already agreed it just wasn't communicated well um in writing so we we're going to continue to really think about 
um, what it is that we need to hash out and get on paper, which is going to help us have a more successful business by um, managing roles and expectations. And for Jaren, I think we, we always talk about our personalities in terms of true color. So Brandon and Jaren are very blue, which means they like harmony and they like everyone to feel included and loved. And Jaren, I think, is the most blue out of all of us. Probably. And I'm the least. I have so little blue. I love people, but yeah, I'm not touchy-feely. And I'm in the middle of these. But so poor Jaren was just so uncomfortable. And Brandon's just trying to make sure I feel hurt. And I'm trying hard not to offend anybody. So being, um, being aware of our personality types and having a mutual respect for each other, I think, really helps. But it is important when you are communicating expectations and writing down and agreeing to expectations for everyone to clearly understand what they are because it helps um, prevent a lot of hurt feelings later with, well, I thought that we agreed to this. And that way we, we talk about it on the front end versus, um, you know, a year later, everyone not living up to other people's expectations because we never really identified what those were anyway. So the th one of the things that I find really interesting with it's this conversation and, and you can laugh at me for saying I just it if you want. Touch, we're a touchy feely group. I is can't. that um, you know we are the three of us are good communicators. Like that we are storytellers. We are people that are okay are good at communicating with others. And even still, we can have issues communicating amongst the three of us. <laughs> as even though we are friends and feel like we can communicate with each other well, anyone can have problems communicating in any context and when it's in a business especially it's important to make sure that you clarify what you're trying to say but there there is that level of like you got to trust that people mean well and mean to say something even if it doesn't isn't reflected on paper like in the case of what I wrote um, but you got to trust that they mean well and you can clarify and and move forward and um, I don't know it's it's an important lesson that I feel like I learned today. Well, and I think, you know, it all goes back to maybe I'm being super like basic. I don't mean to call this book basic, but like the five love languages, even we all have communicate in our own little ways and different things mean different or translated different ways to other people. So what you are putting in kind of gets, I guess it's the whole communication model. You put out a message, it gets frazzled and then it goes into the other person and they, you know, dissect it and absorb it and translate it. But um, it, it's made me even more hyper aware when I deal with like negotiation and stuff at work and communicating to make sure that the terms that I'm using and what I'm trying to get across is the truth to that person. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Well, I got to say, um, in wrapping it up, doing these videos is what makes me realize that I'm taller than you guys. I'm so I'm just so tired. <laughs> like I'm so much taller than you. I have to like scrunch like down to be on like eye level. Well, anyways, we'll see you guys again for story <laughs> year pretty soon. We want to hear your stories. We want to see your stories. So hashtag them up. Hashtag story year. Until next time, grow your story. Grow yourself.